Right, welcome to the video. Pow, 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 pow. This uh, speaks for itself, doesn't it, really? This title here. Just here. Just here. Borderlands 3, uh, Guns, Love and Tentacles. Dismisses the major problems with Lovecraft's work. Yes, that's right! Because the moment you include Lovecraft, you have to. You have to disavow anything negative. You have to. It is part of it. It's an agreement. It's an unspoken rule. Um, and this is what this is what happens now. This is this is a games reviewer, uh, Jordan Ramey. Ra Ramey. Ramey. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at you, shall we? Hmm. Oh right. Okay. You're a GameSpot associate editor who's trying to be an Apex legend. I see. I see. I think what's quite comical about this, right? Bearing in mind, his his article is about Lovecraft and and the works. What is he doing, Sharon? As the world continues, practice social distancing to fight the spread of uh, Corona Chan. We must come together and stay inside. Start right now. All subscription, nudie, cartoon stuff for two weeks. It's all free. What? What's going on? This is a. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right then. <laughs> this is a dude that needs to disavow um, anything negative to, to do with Lovecraft, but happy to go and what? Okay, no worries. Right. Anyway, let's get into it. This is total nonsense. Um, I, w I do need to just address something. Bitch Mams reviews are coming. Okay, just ha hang in there. I know people really enjoy them. Uh, there's a good few of you that really do. Hang in there. They are coming. Um, but let's check it out, right? So this is all to do with Borderlands. With the release of the second story-focused DLC expansion for Borderlands 3, Guns, Love and Tentacles, the marriage of Wainwright and Hammerlock, uh, I figured I'd take the opportunity to jump back into Gearbox's first-person loot shooter. Having not played the game since writing GameSpot's Borderlands 3 review, seeing as the Borderlands franchise has had a decent track record when it comes to post-launch campaigns expansions, I figured, why not? He figured, why not? However, I wasn't particularly infused by my time with Guns, Love and Tentacles. Largely because Gearbox's interpretation of H.P. Lovecraft's work, check this out, incorporates some of the problematic parts of the author's worldview and then does nothing to address them. Right. Okay. Um, look, it is not a game's responsibility to address problems, to address political stances. It's not. Now... If they were actually going in like hard on something and saying this is yeah we're all for the ists you know we are you know ra you know racist things like this can't say these things they get bloody censored it's ridiculous but you know what I mean right if I'm a homophobe and all this kind of crap right if they were saying all of this yeah you could probably take a look at it but this is a real bad take like this is a real bad take and, and to me it speaks volumes of the type of people that are working within the industry, and also just people at large in general. You see Lovecraft and you go, right, I'm associating anything with this work now. I've got like Hawkeye, right? I'm going to be looking at everything with an ultra-critical lens. And then you see things that are not actually there, right? And this is what he's done here. So let's take a look. Bear in mind, it's, it's no one's responsibility to address anything. Not like this, anyway. It's the DLC's portrayal of black people that irks me the most. Largely because the Borderlands franchise style of storytelling. Borderlands games traditionally explore concepts or pieces of pop culture through sarcasm, satire or playful homage. Gearbox takes something that already exists and adapts it to match its style or irreverent Borderlands mayhem. Now remember that. Match its style, sarcasm, satire, playful homage, right? And match it with its irreverent Borderlands mayhem. So this is what he is already saying that they already do, Yeah. Now he continues and he says, when this process works, it works really well. For example, blah, 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 blah. Now, get on to this DLC. Guns, Love and Tentacles is a Lovecraft-themed DLC incorporating certain aspects of H.P. Lovecraft's stories and the Cthulhu mythos as the backdrop to the overall narrative. Here we get into the meat of it. This is what he is seeing anyway. Unfortunately, what makes the DLC feel more adaptive than interpretive is in how it treats Sir Hammerlock and Wainwright Jacobs, the two characters who are at the centre of Guns, Love and Tentacles. The DLC is about the two characters getting married and facing the unfortunate snag of holding the venue on a planet ruled by a cult. The cult's leader, Eleanor, dreams 
uh, deems the couple's love to be impure and weak, and so Wainwright becomes the unwilling host of her husband's spirit, doomed to slowly transform into her beloved unless you decide to do something to stop the process, as Hammerlock is rendered a passive bystander for pretty much the entire DLC. So what is it, right? And this is, this is the thing, all the agency falls on you. Now, the actual story is, so the story of the DLC is that a woman, who's essentially an otherworldly witch, robs a gay couple of their happy day, questions their relationship, and then tries to fix the flaw of their love by transforming one of the men into her own husband. Right, so let's take a look at that and, and how it's so bad. Right, by his own admissions, he says that Borderlands games, sarcasm, satire, or playful homage. Now, if you're going to establish love... Lovecraft was massively apologetic and, in fact, and hugely regretted all of his uh, racially motivated things towards the end of his life. Like, that's a well-documented fact, although they don't choose to document it here. Um, now, if you choose to focus in... If you're, if you're going to say, right, well, this guy is, you know, all the ist, right? He's, he's racially prejudiced and all these kind of things. What do you think would irk him the most? Bear in mind, he still regretted all of his actions. But what would you think would irk him the most? Okay, being uh, portrayed in a game, right... Uh, and, and a homophobe, by all, by all accounts, being portrayed in a game, uh, with the, these kind of uh, scenario of a gay couple, and you having to go and save them, right? I, I'm, I'm confused with how this is, you know, applauding and allowing and kind of looking at those things positively. Your mission, clearly there, is to go and save them. Right? It's not to allow them, you know, you're probably going to get some bad juju if you allow that situation to happen. A cult leader to, husband to take over the, um, you know, part of the couple and all of that good stuff. It's framed that you should go and do it. You should go and save it. Now, if Lovecraft is all of these things and he's horrendous and he's all this, that and the other, he wouldn't want that, would he? So if you're talking about satire, sarcasm and playful homage, I mean, it's pretty good, isn't it? It's pretty online with those things. And also, irreverent Borderlands Mayhem. I'd say it's all of those things, wouldn't you? I I would. Yes. Yes. Yes, I would. And then, the, uh, so, so it was a bad take there anyway. And then, the little turd waffle goes on and continues to then say, it all boils down to this. H.P. Lovecraft was an ist. And an outspoken white ist. Um, this isn't, you know, this isn't the case where we must separate the artist from the art either. Well, <laughs> because he's, he's banging on about the fact that he incorporated his views in his literary works. All of his work is inspired by xenophobia. So you can literally separate him and his views from his art. Right? If you're unable to do that, then you fail, you know. People can get the weirdest inspiration behind things which are lauded all over the world, right? You know, his xenophobia, albeit extreme, and he regretted it later in life, was mega... It was predominantly the inspiration for all of his cosmic horror. His lack... Fundamental lack of understanding. Now, he references one of the... Like, one of the, the worst things to reference, really, because it actually goes to show no nuance or understanding for his works. He just goes, oh, well, it's got to be on the creation of Urs. Well, no, my boy. Like, that's one of the worst things to reference. But if you're going to talk about separating the art from the artist and the inability to do it, right, most people would say, well, it's because of, you know, Shub and, you know, the name. Um, literally everything is inspired in in the Lovecraft world by xenophobia. But you can separate them. You absolutely can. You can enjoy the fact that his work and his cosmic horror, right? You can enjoy that, but you can also recognise where it came from. There's no, there's no reason behind you can't do the, the two of those things. If you have a fundamental inability to do that, you're an idiot. So anyway, he goes on to say all of these things, right? All the worst things. His hateful opinions regarding people of colour. Also, I've got to say this. Oh my God, right? He... He's, he's going into this, right? Blah, blah, blah. Which states, blah, blah, blah. Um, and then this man says some really uncouth things with respect to um, people of colour, right? So he's... And I hate that word anyway. People of colour. What a horrible term. So he says, his hateful opinions regarding people of colour extend to his stories that cover the occult and cosmic horror as well. For instance, the horror at Red Hook refers to 
Brooklyn, now this is his words, not Lovecraft's, refers to Brooklyn, a New York City borough with a citizenship, citizenship mostly comprised of coloured folks. I'm pretty sure black people don't want to be called coloured, right? It's not it's not colouring in book, is it, you tard? What is that? Is that not? That's pretty. It's pretty on the nose, isn't it? Anyway, and he's and then he goes on to say what they were described as leprous and cancerous and blah 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 blah. Oh, you know all the worst things in the world. We get it, like we get it. Um, and then he again he says, you know, the problem is that Gearbox does nothing to dismiss all of these things. It's like, well, for God's sake, whatever. Now, I get it, it's a Borderlands game. I don't expect Borderlands 3 to tackle the nuanced ins and outs of every aspect of what makes a Lovecraftian story, but if your game is going to adapt Lovecraft's stories and incorporate the themes and messages of those stories, then you should address their problematic parts too. No, you shouldn't, actually. You can just go, ah, oh, but cosmic horror. Fuck it, why not? Guns, love, and tentacles doesn't do that. Wainwright and Hammerlock don't even get the chance to showcase how their love is worthy of overcoming Eleanor and her husband. Uh, you defeat the villainous couple while your allies helplessly watch. Guns, Love and Tentacles is one of the new few situations where Borderlands traditional irreverence could have been sharply used to mock Lovecraft's horrible views. I think the whole fact that you're going there to stop a cult leader doing that is that. It is that mockery. It goes to the same kind of ar uh, argument when we were talking about Jojo Rabbit, right? People were like, oh, it's you're mocking, um, you're mocking Hitler and, and Jews and all this kind of stuff. And it was like, well, you know, what would be the, one of the worst things Hitler would could think of, right, set it away in the future? Well, maybe, you know, a pretty campy New Zealander playing him and mocking him non-stop for, a, you know, a good two hours. I'm pretty sure he wouldn't like that. So what's wrong with doing that? Again, if you're so anti-Lovecraft, you should, you should be on board with this. The fact that these are, you know, it's a mockery of him in the respect that you are tasked with stopping that scenario from happening. So you're, it's clearly painting right from wrong. But no, that's not enough. You have to really just get in there, don't you? It's total nonsense. It's total trash. It's a real bad take. From a guy? Might I add? From a guy? Who's promoting free cartoon... Like, mate, get outside. What are you doing? Like, seriously? He's pinned it. Oh, no, he's retweeted it. I mean, like, for God's sake. Bro. Anyway, love to see your thoughts. Let me know down below in the comments. We've got a live stream tonight. This is the 30th of March, Monday, 9pm GMT. Myself and Andre from Midnight's Edge. Tune in. I've got to say these things now. They're every single Monday, 9pm GMT, but no one gets notified. So just set your watches uh, and hope to see you all there. Thank you so much. Take care.